Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. The Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, says the federal government will obey an order of the Supreme Court, which ordered the suspension of the deadline for the swap of old to new Naira notes by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Speaking on the telephone with Arise News, Malami says although the government is dissatisfied with the ruling, it will comply with the order as a demonstration of the government's commitment to the rule of law. The AGF says his office has filed a preliminary objection challenging the jurisdiction of the court. Meanwhile, while the federal government is dissatisfied with the ruling, the governor of River State, Yesom Wike, and the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, have both expressed satisfaction with the Supreme Court ruling over the cash swap policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria. However, hundreds of agreed youths converge in Abuja on Wednesday to protest against the Supreme Court ex parte order. The protesters passed a vote of confidence on the APS Bank, urging it not to back down on the currency swap policy. Joining us now on this show to analyze the ruling or the position of the Supreme Court, as it were, and the compliance of the federal government is Robert Clark, an elder statesman and senior advocate of Nigeria. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us on the morning show. Good morning, Ruben and uh, Rufai. It's morning, my sir. pleasure to be here. Yes, sir. Morning, and the well, first time I'm seeing you this year, so Happy New Year to you. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Happy New Year, sir. Your Happy New Year. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, quickly, the issue before us is uh, the uh, position the, of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court granting the ex parte injunction that three state governments asked for with regard to the new Naira notes and the CBM policy. And now the federal government, through the office of the Attorney General, is going back to the same Supreme Court to file a preliminary objection and questioning the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Their key argument uh, is that this case should have begun at the level of the federal high court and that the CBN should have been joined in the matter. And having not done that, uh, the CBN has raised the question of jurisdiction. What's your view, sir? My view is principally this. The federal government has no alternative whatsoever but to accept the judgment of the Supreme Court. Whether, whether it was made out of jurisdiction or within jurisdiction, until that aspect is redetermined by the Supreme Court, the federal government has no alternative than to accept. So the Attorney General is doing the correct thing. However, I am really, really surprised that the Attorney General will now say they are challenging that uh, decision of the Supreme Court because it was made out of jurisdiction. Out of jurisdiction on the basis that a party that is a necessary party, which is Central Bank, has not been joined in the suit. I am greatly disappointed with the Attorney General's view. The Attorney General is my son, in whom I have great pride in, but on this occasion he's flatly wrong in all aspects of this matter. First, joinder or misjoinder of a, of a necessary party, does that, does that create jurisdiction. jurisdictional matter to the court? No. Secondly, the Constitution, which is Section 5 of the Constitution, has vested all executive powers to the President. When you sue the principal in a case and you don't bring in the agent, what is your palaver? The federal government is the principal character in monetary matters in Nigeria. The central bank is only an agent of the federal government. The law is clear. Once you sue the principal, you do not need to join an agent. Therefore, I believe that there is no merit in this preliminary objection. It will not be given any meritorious uh, hearing more than the fact 
that it will be struck out. Thank you. So there goes the question, what about the independence of the central bank in all of this that has been touted in this conversation? Thank you very much. The independence of the central bank does not mean that under the law, it does not you know, take instructions from anybody. The law is clear that however and how be it, the central bank is independent of anybody. It is not independent, it is not independent of the law that creates it. And the law that creates it says it has to take dictation from the president. So where is the dependence? Mr. President, as the sole and only person that can determine all executive matters, is monetary consideration not an executive matter? So where is the independence? The central bank only has independence in deciding to do all those functions that are created under the same law to be done by the central bank. Monetary matters are matters that have many faces. It has its policy, it has its operational, and it has other purposes. So the policy matter has to be determined by Mr. President. Therefore, I don't see where the central bank will say on monetary matters, I and only I can decide. No, 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 no. That is stretching it too far. Thank you. One of the things that the uh, council for representing the Attorney General of the Federation that they are saying is that the order given by the uh, Supreme Court lapses on February 15, which is when uh, the, the next uh, uh, date that the court announced. Does, it, does that order automatically lapse? And what will be the implication for the injunction that was granted by that court earlier? You see, interim injunctions, whether from the Supreme Court or from the Court of Appeal or from the you know, federal high courts or state high courts, are limited in the number of days they can stand as the law. One thing you have to admit is that interim that is given ex parte is one of the most illegal actions being taken by courts because they are not hearing the other side. And that, you know, by itself, the constitution of Nigeria does not permit it. He says in a democracy, when there is a matter, both sides must be listened to. But however, interim orders, even by nature, are in quote, illegal. The law says, okay, we will cure this illegality by keeping it for only 15 days or 10 days, depending on the whims and caprices of the court. Therefore, the period when the court says, I will listen to the merit of the matter, that period legalizes the legality of the, of the order. And on the day it is being had, the interim order ceases to exist because the matter now is being had on merit by the court. Therefore, if the court starts listening to it on the 15th, as the Supreme Court has said, there is no illegality continuing from that date because after the hearing, the Supreme Court will make another order which, is, which will satisfy the Constitution and satisfy all litigants. So, sir, I'll also press this further. Doesn't the law establish the CBN as a statutory body? Because I know there are cases, and many cases, that the CBN had been sued independently of the FG. And there are so many cases there and then. So, if that is the case, then let's explore this case of, you know, jurisdiction even further. So, is it a case of we can pick and choose now? You see, the problem with you journalists, and I've been watching all the three stations in Nigeria, 
maybe only channels that has not been prejudiced, that has not been sympathetic to most of these uh, 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 political parties that have been conversing. I am sorry to say this. I do not trust you journalists again during political uh, campaigns because you allow your leanings to one political party to determine the way and manner. You look at issues in Nigeria. Let us be honest, Ruben and uh, my good friend. Let us be honest. Have you not suffered from this shortage of Naira? I, Robert Clark, just yesterday issued a check to my bank. They could not pay me. I had to go and buy 100,000 Naira for 125,000 Naira. I've done that twice. Can't you pity people who are suffering if I can be buying at that rate? What about the common man? Look, let us thank God that we have a judgment from the Supreme Court. Because God forbid, if not for this judgment from the Supreme Court, this country will be in flames in a week's time. Many of you don't know what is going on. No, 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 but, sir, I asked a it question based on the law. The sir, I asked a question based on the law. And, sir, there are many rounded views to this. And I take exception to the fact that once we are exploring all rounded views, you say our views are jaundiced because I, too, am suffering from this. But we have a right to ask questions based on the law. And that's why I asked that. Wasn't the CBN set up as a statutory Hello. body? And have we not had cases where the CBN has been sued independently of the FG in this case? That's the question I ask, sir. Look, I quite, I quite agree with you. Depending on individual cases, depending on each fact, which have to be looked into, this particular case has only to do with policy. It is not the monetary that you are calling it. It's a question of policy of the federal government or that of the central bank. It has nothing to do with monetary uh, statistics or the, no. The federal government says, central bank says, and the law is that, look, if there's a confusion, and is creating more confusion to the public. What should happen? So don't get me wrong. The central bank can be sued in multifarious ways without joining the federal government or any other third party. But what I am telling you now, that the deadline for change of currency is not a central bank monetary policy. Don't let us disturb ourselves with that. This is a policy. Federal government says we are doing it because politicians are going to use money to bribe voters. So it's a policy matter dependent on their own way of looking at things. It has nothing to do with finance, financial prudence. But was any CBN so law broken? Bank cannot take refuge. But, sir, but let's what? go back to the CBN Act. Was any law in the CBN Act broken as regards the timeline stipulated for this change? Look, forget about legality or non-legalities of this matter. The matter today is what you should concentrate upon. The matter today is that the central bank has given us a limit when we can spend our money or return our money. It's a policy matter. You cannot find that in the, in the act, the Central Bank Act. This is a policy matter. And the federal government, under the Nigerian Constitution, the president has been given full executive powers on such matters. So if the Central Bank has a law, you won't find in the law that when you are changing currency, you should give 10 days of this. It's not in the law. All these are political matters that delve on policy matters. And we have to look at it. Are these policy matters in line with what we are going through in Nigeria today? The poverty in Nigeria today? How can we rush, surrender our currencies to central bank? We are not getting the new currency. And if we are going to get it, we go to third parties who are trading on it. 
Please, 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 don't let us look at legality now. This is not a legal matter at all. Stop trading in currency on this date or not this date. It's, not a, it's a pure policy matter which has been dictated by politics. And um, it has grown to show that two of the political, and that is the day. I, I know I'm not a politician and I don't trust them. But two of them, some assaulted by force saying that, no, it's going to cause harm cheap. Within hours, one of them said, no, stop it. Tell them to stop it. Look, are they not moving around the whole country? Are they not hearing what people are suffering from? I, Robert Clark, in Lagos, with my status, I have been suffering by this policy matter. So it's not a question of legality, whether central bank has sole power or does not have sole power. As I've told you, central bank is an agent of the federal government. So when you are suing central bank and you fail to join them, a misjoinder does not mean that the court that assumes jurisdiction has no jurisdiction because it is the principle of central bank that is before the Supreme Court. The only thing federal government can do on Wednesday when they get before the Supreme Court to say, look, even though I am the principal to central bank, but I want them to be joined in this matter. So the, the non-joinder in the beginning of this suit does not make the case null and void. Abinicio. So please, please, let us look at the reality of what is happening in Nigeria today as a result of this policy. Okay, sir. Thank you. Two quick things. One of the grounds on which the uh, federal government is filing its objection is that no dispute has been established between those three states that went to the uh, Supreme Court to enable them to invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And that those states have not shown any reasonable course of action. Uh, and here you are, uh, you know, giving us your own experience as a citizen living in, uh, you know, inside Nigeria and having that experience as a result of this policy. So I'd like you to respond to that. And then secondly, what happens to that other case by the four political parties that took the CBN, the federal government, and 27 commercial banks to the federal high court in Abuja, uh, where you know, they got an injunction barring the uh, federal government from uh, extending the deadline further. Well, thank you very much, Ruben. You are al al aligning yourself to what Obaseki, His Excellency, let me put that Excellency there, saying that he too is a governor of a state and he is not affected by that judgment or that. Look, that is not the law. If only one out of 36 governors in Nigeria today feel that there is something wrong in a policy of the federal government, that one state, by law, can singly go to the Supreme Court and sue the federal government. There is no rule that says if governors are suing the federal government to have that original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, all of them must come to court. No, one of them can go to court. So the submission of Obaseki, with due respect to him, is so naive and is unsellable to any well-thinking uh, person because he's not affected. Who tells him he's not affected? Because he's spending government money as he likes? Has he sent his wife to the market? Has he bought Naira the way we are buying it? He has not suffered what we are suffering. How is he saying he's not affected? I am sorry to hear that from him. A man who should defend the people, who is coming back to the people to ask for their boots, said he's not affected by what sufferings Nigerians are going through now. Haba, let him go and think well about that statement. Now, you're talking about the Federal High Court. Normally, as I said, anybody can go to court when it feels his interest has been affected. Now, these four or five political parties have gone to court and saying that, oh, we are happy with the Central Bank. 
please give us an interim order so that they could not extend the date for submission of swapping of all currencies. They are right. But when you look at the Nigerian constitution, in between the time they filed that one, there was no Supreme Court ruling on the same subject matter. So you can't blame the judge that gave them the order. But if they had waited like today or tomorrow to rush to the same court, the court will tell them that, look, the Supreme Court is seized of the matter. It will be, you know, rascality on my part as a judge to be making an order when there is a subsisting order. Subsisting order. So at the time the Federal High Court was hearing this matter, there was no subsisting order. So they made the order correctly. But what will happen is that the day they have adjourned it to, both parties will agree that events have overtaken the ruling of that court because according to hierarchy of courts, they cannot continue on the, what the judge said last week because it will be an exercise in vain because the Supreme Court has taken charge. So they will adjoin it until the determination of the case in Supreme Court. So that's what is going to happen. And if the, the Supreme Court decides one way or the other, they in the lower court will be bound by what the Supreme Court has said. So if it is in line with what the judge has said, she cannot they will be happy. And if not, they lose. Th thank you so much, sir. Are you with me? Yes, we're with you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Hey, because of time, we can't continue, but I'd love to ask you more on properly joining people in suits and, you know, and the, you know, the basics of legalese and all of that. But thank you so much, sir, for your impact. And Happy New Year, sir, once again. Good to see you. Wish you very prosperous. Yes.